Hey everyone. All right. Well, we're just going to jump right in. Um, there's never a good place to start. It's like we can start with figure, start with portrait. I don't know. Anyway, um, I'm just going to start uh, with myself because I've been doing a lot of self portraits this uh, last couple of years. So I thought that's a comfortable place to enter in, I hope. Um, like I was saying in the video before, um, doing yourself is, uh, portrait is a great um, thing because you're your own model. Um, you can look at yourself in the mirror, you can take, you know, a selfie and paint from that, um, whatever, whatever works best for you and whatever's most comfortable. But that's a nice place to start because you do know what you look like. Now, if you want to start with some made up person too, that's a good thing too, because then it doesn't matter what they look like. So it depends how much you want to challenge yourself in whichever direction. Just if you want to just let loose and have fun and play, then just, you know, make a Martian. I mean, you know, <laughs> create a character or find a great photo on Unsplash. Um, anything like that will work and you can, you know, just, just play with it. Um, we're going to start with doing um, just like a really light quick sketch and then we're going to go in with color and just see what we can do and see how, how far we can push it so let me um change my camera there we go all right get a good uh, view of this hopefully okay okay so um when i'm doing something like this Usually like I'll, I will look at the mirror or I'll look at a photo reference or a combination of things. And mainly I just want to think like, what do I, where do I start even in the sketch? So for a watercolor sketch, I don't really want a lot of pencil marking. Honestly, I just want some guidelines. So getting that face shape, you know, down or, you know, whatever you're going to be putting, if it's the whole body or the face, whatever it is, getting those marks down um, is a good starting point. So on the face, if you have an oval, right? I think we can see this. Okay, yeah. If you have an oval or, you know, ovally like face like mine, um, head shape, getting that shape in and then realizing everything's always going to be you're always comparing and I don't want this many marks on my page, but I'll, I'll take them out after. Um, so say you, you've got your whole face shape here, you have to start realizing like, okay, well, where are the eyes going to sit on this and generally people put them up way too high, but the eyes are really at the halfway point. Um, so you can divide up. A lot of times you've seen people draw like that where they're marking the different things, the areas. That's usually why, because they want to make sure, oh, the eyes are down here. They're not up here. Um, all my, my, my little guys that I teach are always putting their eyes like way up on tops of their heads. And it's so cute. But anyway, when you start looking, everything is just like comparing and finding the negative space, find, uh, putting one shape in and comparing it to the next. So if eyes are in the middle, they're generally, and everything is approximations, there's usually five eyes across the head. So that's how you can sort of tell. If you're at a little bit of a turn, you're gonna lose some of the eye on one side and maybe it's moved over here. So you sort of have to, you know, squish it a little bit over when, when, you're, when you're moving around to a partial, it's not straight on, straight on. So, there are so many um, guidelines for getting the perfectly proportioned face. And then when you start actually doing them, you find out that there really aren't any perfect people, I guess. So um, with that, let's just get some placeholders for eyes. So like say that was an eye, there's a space the same size as the eye in between. So there would be our next eye. So one, two, three, four, and a part of one and a part of one over here and here. That's how you know, you kind of like, okay, that's, that's just about right. Then um, down the face, the halfway point between the eyes and the chin is where the, uh, the, the nose is going to be, the end of the nose. Generally, not always, some people have short little perky noses, some people have bigger noses. Um, so it just sort of depends. And then we come in here with 
your chin and your mouth all fit in this area here, believe it or not, but something like that. So if you sort of just like, this isn't a drawing class, this is painting. We really don't want to have all these lines showing up necessarily in our, in our thing, but I just kind of wanted to show you some placement of stuff and give you an idea of it. And then we can, um, you know, take out the lines afterwards. So I'm just going to, um, between the eye and the eyebrow is another eye space, depending again on the person, but generally, generally there's, it doesn't ever seem like it should be that high on your eyebrow, but it is usually that brow line is going to come that eye space above. So we've kind of got a feel for where everything is. The nose is going to come down here. The mouth is going to be right in there and then the chin. So we've got our markings, ears, ears. Um, my hair is covering mine when I'm drawing from, but the ear goes between the eye and the bottom of the nose. So it's usually where your ear is gonna lie in there and in there. So I'll put indications for it, even though I'm gonna probably cover it up with hair. Um, but all those things you just notice as you're looking at the person you're drawing or painting, start saying, oh, wait, well, what is that? And you can even just do some guesstimations with your fingers saying, oh, okay, well, my nose is that big and that, you know, or whatever it is. And you can just start guessing on your paper and getting things and looking at relationships like the side of this face, since it's turned a little bit, how much space do I have there compared to over here? So you just start making those connections. All right, so let's see. I'll just like get this in a little bit more like me now instead of just some weird mannequin-y person. Um, just start looking like as, you know, you can go detailed as you want in your pencil sketch, um, depending on how much you want to show too. And I'm just using, um, mechanical pencil, oftentimes, I know I've talked to you guys about this before, but I've used the um, sketch and wash and that just will blend right in. So I'm not sure why I didn't just grab that, but I didn't. So we'll, we'll go with this. Um, and just get the ideas of my face and where things are gonna be in there. And then I'm gonna pull out the paints and really that's when I'll start really making my marks, I think. The mouth, um, when you go down the eyeball, straight down, that's where the end of the mouth is. Since this is a turned one, it's kind of odd, but my mouth is kind of going up a little bit there and there, but those will be the ends. So I just wanna put some indication for it. Indication for the chin. Now let's get that uh, polar chin that I have. Extend that out a little bit. Anyway, I'm getting the idea of <laughs> pretty much of where where things are going to be. You know, you guys look at me on Zoom all the time. You're going to say, this looks nothing like you. But okay, you're right. I try to make myself look better than I am. <laughs> okay. So, and then of course, you know, we'll have the hair and decide where that's going to go and how much of, you know, the body we're going to show. Hairline's going to come way out here from up above, right? Because the skull is extending back behind that. This is just the face. I don't want to forget we've got a whole skull attached to this, right? So that will bring my hair down here. And it's very fluffy today, I hope, <laughs> anyway. And this side. And shoulder out here. Let's see the neck. I can't quite see my neck, but it's something like that. And my other shoulder, because I'm at a little bit of a turn, is coming back here. So enough information, I think, at least for now, that my bangs are come way down because they need to be cut. <laughs> I got a little bit of space in there. Anyway, getting close. So 
once I have enough information in, then I'm just going to start painting. And if you don't want lines to show through, again, you could use the um, the um, sketch wash pencil with the water soluble. Um, you can also have your sketch and then just come back, like especially, you know, these lines. I'm not going to want those at all. Um, I can take off stray lines or and or I can really just lighten everything. So I don't have this unwrapped all the way, but this is um this is one of those kneaded erasers. So <clears throat> I can pull off a piece of it. It's like Play-Doh and stretch it around, make it whatever shape. Anyway, if I want to lighten some of this, take some up, I can take some up that way because all of these lines will show through a transparent watercolor. Some people like that look. I know I do. I like having some lines show. I think it's fun and it's looser. Um, <clears throat> but if you don't, you can take a whole lot off and just still have enough of a guideline to follow in with. Um, okay. So let's move on. Okay, so getting the watercolors out and trying to, you know, think more on this. Um, like, as I look at it, it's like, I know that this isn't looking, this is looking like very young me. So hopefully I'll work in a little bit more, but if, even if it doesn't, I just want to, you know, we're, we're playing. But I can see certain things like here, how I loop down, you know, I've got these really big eyes going and I, that's, that's all wishful thinking. So if I want to get a little bit more, Accurate before I start. This is the time you can do that. This time you can just like look if you're looking in the mirror or at a person, whatever you're doing, you know, make some adjustments like, okay, that really goes up there that it's going to fall in line with the wrinkles that are there, probably. Um, things like that. I can just shift a few little things to make it a little bit more like accurate. Um, but again, I don't want you guys worrying about that. I want you to play with some color and have fun. So even if this does look like, you know, 12 year old me, that's great. That's fine. <laughs> that's what this is going to end up being. I'm, I'm good with that. Um, so I'm going to start with just some wet on wet technique because I think it's like for skin modulation and just for starting going wet on wet, letting the color just do the fun things. It's just a really great place to start and to play with it. Afterwards, going in and fine tuning and getting the details where we would go wet onto dry, that's where um, that's where we'll do that. So I've got a water spray bottle. I think I've shown you that a couple of times, so I always forget to um, show you. I usually do it before I start the camera, but um, this is just a great way to both wet your colors and your palette if you're doing a palette like this, um, but also your paper. So you can squirt right onto your paper get it, you know, kind of damp that way, not soaking, but damp. And then we can go right in with color. So I am going to really have fun playing with color, I think, at least that's the goal, and play with some things that you might not think about doing. So skin color is, in watercolor, If it, it's really, you know, I mean, skin colors are all different. So it's really a matter of like, okay, well, I can't do that, but I could do a swatch. I, I do this with my oil and it works on the palette knife. <laughs> anyway, obviously it's not gonna work on that, but let me see if I have a uh, swatch of paper, I can pop that on. So as you see, you know, you can just play on a side paper and say, oh, is that matching it? Is that looking close to what I want? Do I want to go a little redder or purpler? You're gonna start with wherever your lightest highlight is because that will be the lightest area and then, I mean, you might even be, you know, of course the whites of the eyes or whatever you might want to keep. Um, but you can, you will be adding in more color and going darker, but you can't really go lighter. I mean, we can lift a little bit, but plan on your first, if you are doing like a whole face portrait like this, plan on like looking for where is that highlight? What color is that? And that would be right there. The side of my face is all lit up and the thing I'm looking at. So, so going in with that initial wash of color is gonna make sense because then I can come back in and darken these other areas, but this will be the right color, you know, starting. So just letting the color just come down 
and I'm going to play with it a bit and modulate things. Let's see, there's a little bit of a highlight here on the chin too. So that's going to stay that color, very, very orangey. But I'm feeling rather orangey today. I have orange pants on. <laughs> so why not? So I will go right up into the forehead, even though hair is going to be covering all of that, but I want to do that. Um, also go down into the neck area. So all of my flesh tones are taken care of. And it's really a good place to start going back and doing the clothing and the hair later. It usually makes more sense to me at least. We always just need a place to start. So now to the same puddle of paint, or maybe you make several different puddles, it's good to have you know, a lighter and a darker or more yellow and a more blue of these skin tones. So I'll show you that on this paper here too. I think you can see it here. No, I can't see my brush yet. Here we go. I'll just put some of that down, but see how that's a darker? That would be my darker one, um, a little bit bluer, a little purple in it. So the, so far all I've used was a little bit of a yellow orange, like a cad orange and um, Cad red medium. I think that's what those two are. Yeah, might be the, yeah, anyway, close enough. <laughs> but a, a yellow orange and a cad red medium was what I had in this. And then when I went in, I added a little bit of purple to that mix and just lots of water. And that ends up getting a skin tone that's nice. You don't have to have white and gouache in it. A lot of people do, and that's okay too if you want to do that. But you know, you kind of run the risk of getting it kind of chalky looking and, okay, so this is, yeah, this is still wet, so yay. Um, as it's still wet, I wanna go in and start getting some of those darker areas with that darker color I just mixed while it's wet so we can just kind of move around a little bit. I mean, I don't want it blotchy, which it's, you know, could be. So I can, I can always pick things up with a dry brush. Just a lot of back and forth on on this hair is going to be going there anyway, I think, but um, a little bit anyway. But you just keep playing. You know, this side of the face is darker than where the light is hitting on this side of the face. So I'll go in with a layer here. And then once this layer is done, I'll let it dry. And then I'm gonna go in with another layer. Yeah, this is going on. I'm using, um, oh, it's coming up. I'm using a block, but it, it, it came up on the sides. Anyway, that's all right. So it will, it will curve up a bit. Um, but I'm using cold press, that's what I was about to say, rather than hot press. I'm used to hot press, but I wanted to try the cold press for this one. I thought maybe my color would move in different ways. All right, so let's just see if I get some straight purple on the brush, see what we do with that as far as getting some, a little bit more modulation in there. Yeah, got right onto the nose where I don't want it. So dry brush, come back in, soak that up, control it a little bit. So if things aren't quite as you want it, know that you can go back in and pick stuff up. You can go back in with a dry brush, with a paper towel, with a sponge. I think the dry brush gives you a chance to really have some control. Um, let's see what it looks like if I go in with a little blue. This is an experiment, so why not? Um, a little bit of ultramarine blue, a lot of water. It's still all very wet, so I'm still wet on wet hair. But kind of interesting, you can draw with that and really get some dramatic uh, shadow going. See, now I'm going to start looking old, old and beat up. <laughs> but it's kind of interesting just to see what you can do with it and the shaping that you can get. Um, blue is dramatic. Purple is probably a little bit more natural. That probably would have been a better choice if I'm trying to make this a little bit more realistic. But, you know, I can... I can pick that up. I can move stuff around and not look like I have a black eye. <laughs> now we'll go back in with the purple like I should have done in the first place. Let's see. 
purple on there. I'll show you the same thing. That's a lot. That's extreme, but it's all right. That's not. See, that's looking better. And again, with the eyes. I'm just moving it around. This is like this. When you're working small like this, it feels a little bit tedious or a little, you know, like mm, too controlled. That's when I really want to just get in there and say, I don't know, let's just let the color do what the color does and have some fun with it and let it be all blotchy and weird. And that's okay too. So yeah, remember some of those ones we looked at, there were definitely some that just would fall into that category of I'm going to get a little darker on this whole side of the face. So we have more of an extreme. I mean, you can see the way the color can move around. Definitely we want to go darker under here. So more purple. And I'm going to outline that chin a bit. So we're off to a start. We'll let that dry and we will come back and go in with more. So. Okay, so I think it's dry enough to go back in and start working some, some more of this. Um, I could go and do hair next and make sure that's completely dry. Start doing working on hair and, and clothing and then I'll come into the face. I think that's my plan. So for the hair, um, I'm gonna mix up a brown color. It's using the um, Burnt Sienna and I put a little black in, but actually I should have put the ultramarine blue. That's what I usually do. So I'm gonna do a little of that too. I think it's more natural looking than the black. It just tends to make it really dead looking. So a little burnt sienna and ultramarine blue. And then, you know, of course, depending on what your color you're doing, but that's how I make mine. Um, and I think the color will be more fun to play with too. When it's got that blue in it, it's gonna, for right now, I just, I'm not gonna do, you know, strands of hair, right? I just wanna get the shape of it, the overall shape that I'm getting in. Oops, I got a little bit on that, but I didn't want to. Uh, let me pick it up. Um, I can let the color go crazy too. If I wanted to drop in more color, I'll show you some of that in just a sec. Um, I'm like trying to notice where that light is hitting over on this side too. It makes it lighter, but as hair comes in closer to the body, generally it appears darker because it's kind of going into shadow. So getting that in first is one way. Actually, I have that coming all the way down my neck under the chin. And that stuff come down longer. Out. And then from, you just like, kind of like look at where is that top of the skull? Where's the hair coming out from? Sometimes it's like, especially, you know, my case where I'm putting the bangs in, I really kind of want to get that point and let, let stuff come down. And then have the lighter area where maybe I'll get a little bit of orange in there or something to get, or even yellow. Yeah, we'll go with orange for now. Get some lights in there where the light is hitting on that side. Oops, as you can see. Um, and I probably wouldn't keep it. I mean, you can keep it that dramatic, but yeah. I mean, that's kind of the fun of watercolor that it doesn't have to be, you know, so exacting. It can 
it'd be okay just to leave it at something like this. I can't see my ear. I mean, I can't in the way I'm holding my head, but I know it's there. So part of me wants to just like go and say, Ew, let's get an indication for ear going here. I think it would make more sense. And just layering color, let, let the watercolor be fun. You can just like really get squiggly with it, um, you know, kind of depending what you're doing. I can go bluer over on this side. Um, yeah, so it's like closer to the, the head. drag things up, get some indication lines in there. So it's sort of looking like I'm separating out some hair. Anyway, that's kind of bleeding together nicely. I feel like it's taking some shape. My bangs are coming down much longer than I have them because I need to trim them. So maybe I'll go ahead and do that. Close. All right, so let's see next. I'm gonna let that dry, but I think I can come in and work the eyes while that's drying. And maybe even since we're the same color, I can get the um, eyebrows in a little bit. Just taking my brush, it's a flat, you know, brush, and making the mark that way, almost just the littlest bit of paint on it, so I can carry it around and get it pretty close. If you're doing young children, you're going to want to, to have a really light touch on the eyebrows, even on yourself. Sometimes it's, I know I go too dark on them sometimes. Oops, I got a little bit much. So if you do something like that and you don't particularly like that line, I get my water on my brush. I'll put it back down there. Soak that up a little bit, get the dry brush, and pick it up. That's better. All right, so now I can come in and pay some attention to the eyes a bit. Um, switching out brushes is good. I'm gonna go with something tiny so I can just get some of that detail in a little bit better. Um, I'm gonna again go with some of that same hair color paint that I had mixed up little bit of that and I can start drawing stuff in maybe a little bit more brown in it. Ooh, too much okay now I can start drawing so so that this is the you know the tight part it's like ugh. And it's getting like way darker than what I want. So I should mix mix more water into that. I'll pick it up with my sure I got the bright the right brush. No, that wasn't the dry. That was the dry. Um yeah, oops. A little bit more water mixed in with my mix because I don't want to go and go down that dark because it's just gonna pop out way too much and I'm doing a lighter touch on this one okay so in the eyes we've got um we've got sockets our eyes are in sockets right so they're set back in our head. So we kind of need a space for it to sit back in. And it's tempting just to like do something like this. And a lot of beginning, even advanced students will do this where they'll um, leave. Here, let me just get an eyeball in there. They'll leave the whites completely white. And the thing is they aren't. 
Um, it's sitting back in space. It's shadowed. It's held together by veins and things, you know, blood vessels are in there. So there's these, you know, this coloring going on in there too that, um, that it's not, it's not totally white. So graying that down, um, um, think about the eyeball itself. I'm gonna get a little blue on here. A lot of water, a lot, a lot of water. I'm in my little corner here. I'm like working around the palette. Anyway, once you've got like a little bit of water down blue, I probably shouldn't do this till this is dry, but oh well, I'm gonna try it. Um, I'm gonna put that down in the corner and see that's like super dark and pick it back up with the corner of that. But I'm get leaving behind a teensy bit of blue. I don't know if you can see that on camera as well as I can see it here, but um, it's starting to feel more set back and not as bright. So notice the difference between the two. It's got a little coloration and you can definitely put more. It's not always easy with watercolor to, uh, and depending how big or small you're working. So all of those things play in. I know I've got some like wrinkle stuff going down here. It's like, him. <laughs> how old should I make myself? Mm -hmm. I was liking it young, but I'll, I'll go and put a little bit of that in. And then this is a little bit too, um, the lid of, or the, the lip that the eyeball is, is in there, but there's like this little skin there. You don't want to like outline the eye, right? There's planes and things that we're dealing with and the way light's hitting, all those things that really, uh, we think a whole lot more and maybe in terms when we're doing a oil or acrylic painting, you can really mess with it a long time. Sometimes with watercolor, just it just to keep it soft and not um, not worry too much about it. But still, we don't want to necessarily want a harsh line around there. That's that's a little bit on the harsh side for me right there. But we'll see. I might, yeah, not we'll see. Let's just take it up. I am going to soften it with a wet brush, slightly wet. I'll just come back in and kind of erase it. Yeah, that's softening it better. So it's more of a skin fold instead of a line that's outlining. Let's try the other one. So here I'm about to do the same thing again. <laughs> like, damn, damn it. I'll take it up again. Get a little bit more brown. So softening that. Let's bring that down a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Super big eyes. I know my eyes aren't this big. I'm not deluding myself, but I'm just going to keep going with it. <laughs> Let's see. Like this one, it goes up too high. So. I don't know. I'll see if I can fix that part, but I don't know. Oops, that's my dry brush. What am I thinking? All right, come in with a little bit of water. I can just drag that down slightly. There you go. So, and with oil or acrylic painting, this is easy move. With um, with watercolor, it's not always. So it's like putting that water down to erase it, and then picking it back up with the dry brush. It gets us closer. Now I'm gonna go back in with a little bit more color there, but I'm gonna have to wait for it to dry. 
we're getting closer. But again, it's always like looking, so like as you look at it, it's like, oh, you know, this should be closer to the hair, which I can fix that by putting hair in. Because I've got the wider spot on this. This eye should have come a little bit closer to the side of the face over here, which I can pull out that socket and do that. A lot of this is getting way too picky that I wasn't gonna do with this one. I want you guys to have fun and play, but I'm on this track now of just, um, wanted to let's see um okay so the side of the face like where the eyes are usually there's a little dent in there and i just didn't have enough of one so i'm just going to kind of reshape and it's okay i can do that or maybe not into the forehead as much like i'd have there but i'll pick that up That's looking a little bit more into in proportion. Um, yeah, I think. Anyway, we will uh, let that dry and move. Okay, so while I'm letting that area dry a bit, I'm gonna move in and get like maybe just the a little bit of coloring in for the clothing. We'll have some fun there for a sec and then in the background pass it right and then I'll go back in and get more face details. And again, you know, don't stress over it. Just like have some fun and do as much as, you know, as much as you want. If you get to a point like I'm getting to where you just wanna maybe throw it away, <laughs> do it, you know, or not throw it away, save it and, and look at it later and say, oh, how far I came. Um, either way, but, I think everything, like even just like making myself finish this, even though it's like not looking like me, but it's still good practice making a person that looks human, right? So it's all, it all feeds into what we do. I'm just gonna have fun, let it just go goofy around. This is the time where you could just like really play with, you know, letting the color do, oh, sorry, I don't think, sorry letting the color move around, maybe charging other colors into it. Um, on that lighter side, I could have gone in with a brighter, lighter green, possibly. Uh, it's not really moving as much as I want it to move, but, um, but that's okay. Let's see, we can always, you know, take a paper towel or a cloth or a sponge and you can play with getting some patterns. Yeah, that's gonna puddle up and make a line. But I might have it drift into the background too. So that might be a, that's a thought. We can play with background at the same time if we don't mind it bleeding. And some of those ones that we were looking at had this beautiful way of just letting color do what color does and um you know getting it nice and wet and playing with even like some transparent glazing too like look what happens when i bring that yellow over the green or over the hair even a little bit it's kind of fun to play with that um Maybe I want to go into more of orangey red on the other side. I'm just getting lots of water on my brush and moving it around. Oh, so it starts coming together and it's not looking as scary. <laughs> I know there's still work to be done, but it, it's shaping up. And while you have like color on your brush, don't be afraid to, you know, use it, right? Put it other places. A lot of times I know my oil painting, I do this. I do this thing where I'm just having fun playing with color and I want to bring it around in different areas of my painting and move stuff around. So it's kind of fun to try that. Maybe I want to go a little brighter there. So bring a little bit more of that orange cheek. Yeah, I don't look like a clown, but you know, 
the high cheekbone going there. <laughs> That's a little bit much though. Soften. Yeah. And I can come in with that same orange and start uh, playing with them um, with the lip color a little bit, possibly. Get a little bit of blue and get some more of the I have to wait for it to dry, but you know those corners, corners of my mouth are pretty defined. <laughs> I think it's I'm smirking or something. And I can move up to the nose area, get a little bit more of that definition. And this is just the part where you can just, honestly, you could just keep playing. You could sit here all afternoon, morning, whenever you're doing this, and just uh, keep messing with it till you get what, what you're after. And at some point, though, you go say, okay, you know, I got everything I wanted to out of this. Maybe I just wanted to, you know, get, the parts in the right place. Maybe I just wanted to, um, you know, have something that reads human person. <laughs> so, or maybe, you know, maybe I'm really trying to catch an expression or something. Whatever it is, whatever your goal is, have one goal in mind when you have too many goals, like, like what I did. When you have too many goals, that's when it's like, oh my gosh, you know. Um, You, 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 you get dissatisfied with yourself and you're never, not never, I shouldn't say never. It's like, it's rare that artists, you know, have been doing this all their lives even get that perfect painting, right? Um, I think for me, it's just, it's really been about, <laughs> and I'm, I'm still getting there, learning when to stop because um, obviously I just like kind of keep going like, why did I do that? <laughs> I liked it softer, but I a lot of times you just kind of want to get more out of that, more definition. So you keep kind of drawing, you keep refining, you keep saying, oh, wait, wait, oh, wait, one more thing. Until you get to the point where it's like, oh, why did I do that? So. I know a lot of you guys have heard me say before, I have a daughter who uh, is my stopper or she has been for a long time. She's weaning me off of her services, <laughs> but she's the one that will say, no, no, that's done. Stop now because you're going to ruin it. And she's usually right. And oftentimes I won't listen. I'll say, oh no, but I just want to. And then that's when I like, oh darn. And especially with watercolor, because with watercolor, it's like, oh, you know, it's, it, you guys are learning. It's, they're not, it's not always easy to fix one. It's not like an oil painting where you can just rub it out. Because I'm going darker and darker and look how ridiculous that's looking. So now it's like, okay, time to go in with some water, see what I can do to, to bring this back. I, I liked it so much better before. <laughs> oh, well, do what I say, not what I do. As I get water down and then pick up and then put water down, then pick up till you get it to where you want. It is getting more the feeling of being in a socket, at least on this one, but um, getting more shading and value in there. But I don't know. I don't know that this painting was really supposed to be about 
perfect values and, and realistic. I just wanted to get, you know, an idea of myself on a paper in watercolor. So there is a worthy goal, right? <laughs> it's a little better, softer, but look at this one. Oh, scary. I can just like hear my daughter right now saying, I told you, I told you to stop. I wish she was here in my studio right now. But see, look, with just a little bit of water, let's see, I'm doing this on purpose just to help you guys. <laughs> now with a little bit of water, I can go in and I can soften and I can kind of refine things. Okay, I want a little bit more of a line there. And then a little bit more of a mouth line there. It's coming down quite a bit. Still that part of the eyeball is way too dark. So a little water, dry brush and pick up. It's getting better. Definitely looking older now. <laughs> so no more 12 year old girl. attention to that chin a bit because I didn't really do anything with that. Go ahead and get a little purple. Purple's a good one just to mix in and start to doing stuff. So right under the lip, there's like a little bit of a shadow that comes in there. Not that much though, of course, but I've got it in kind of dark. I should have like really diluted the water down. So when you do that, just get your brush wet with just water. Touch it, touch it, touch it. Now take the dry brush, come in and move it to where you want to move it. And pick up as much as you want to pick up. Oops. Now it's going to go darker under here. I went awfully dark with that. So like, I guess it could be a goatee or something, but <laughs> not quite. Um, so it's okay. I'm gonna get some warmer skin tone from before and glaze over that a bit so I can get a better transition. And so it can look more like it should. So it's super dark. And then dry brush, let's pick some of that up. And let's see, what is still missing to be? There's a, like, a shadow under the nose. I'm just gonna keep messing with this. When you get tired, you can just stop watching and start painting. For sure, you don't have to keep watching this. So I put the mustache on myself. Legs. And pick it back up again. But see how I put it down dark, I picked up and a little bit stayed. So I'm getting that shadow without, um, without too much effort. Let's see. Yeah, I'm getting close. I'm getting close enough for at least for what I want. I can keep letting, you know, letting layers dry, coming back in and, you know, doing a little bit more, a little bit more, you know, forever <laughs> or, you know, for the next several hours. But I'm going to go to an art opening now. So <laughs> got to go. All right. Hopefully. Um, this gives you a starting point. Just jump in. There's nothing, you know, nothing you guys can't do. You just try it. You don't know until you try. Let me get like the ear idea of ear in there. See, I can't stop. At some point I have to go to an art opening and yeah, little ear indication. Little ear indication over here too, which I'll kind of have hair going over it so you can't see it but sometimes when you put a little bit just to give the idea that it's there that I didn't forget it but as long as it's there let's let's clean this up yeah.
Oh, I like that bright green. It's kind of fun. That looks kind of like I have scrubs on. <laughs> I wanted to drop patterns into that. That could be a cool thing. This is like a time you can play for sure. I could go boom and see what happens if I decide to make myself have polka dots or something on instead. That could be a little tie dye. I can give that a squirt and let it let it let it even do more. Get it, you know, kind of like you like, you're happy. You know, I still kind of want to put more hair in. I'm going to let it dry and then put more, but I keep going. <laughs> Ooh, I didn't mean to do that to the brown, the black. I want to it afterwards. I know I've told you this before. Like, you could do this. It's really okay to go in and mess things up this way. Just wipe them off after this block. Dark brown. Last thing I'm doing. <laughs> I just want to add a little bit of just a little indication. Maybe I don't. That gets way too dark. I'll drag it up with the dry brush. Yeah. When this is dry, I can go back in with that too and get a little bit more definition if I want to, or I can, you know, definitely call it a day. See with that dry brush, how I can just sort of drag some color on top of it. And it gives their little indication of hair, of you know, strands or whatever without getting too too defined. Because just like the eyes, I feel like I want the same or similar treatment. If I go in with, you know, too much, it's not gonna look right. Yeah. All right. So that is a start. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I keep looking at it on the screen. It's like, oh, it looks a little different on the screen than here. I don't, not that much different though. Um, and just can't leave it alone. You just this is the this is the problem of doing yourself. So either do it and know that this is a problem, or paint someone that you don't know. And then you won't be doing all this crazy adding on, and fixing water, clean water. I'm going there with clean water. That eye is just bothering me. It's like, ugh, it's too big, too, too old looking. It's like, I don't want to be that old. I mean, I know. That's a little better. And you can even go into this, with, oh, lines around here. you can go into this with your, um, with your water soluble pencil. So like with a sketch and wash or water soluble pencil, if you wanted to get more details, sometimes we have like better control with, um, with this. And so you can really go in Glasses on so I can see what I'm doing, but um, you can go in and you can get like more of the detail of the eye if you wanted that. And you might, it's probably better to wait for it to dry, but um, <laughs> like getting the iris in there, things like that, maybe getting some lashes, a little bit of an indication there. It's nice to, you know, to know that you have this tool. Like, if I want a little bit more of a line there. Um, a little bit darker here, that kind of fits in. Things like that, just kind of making these adjustments too. And then again, if you want, you know, to soften that, like that's a little bit much, or to just like anchor it in place, just a little bit of water. Yeah. <laughs> when will you learn to stop? But I'm liking that. I'm liking that a little bit better. I 
It's getting to be more me. That's a little dark, but it's all relative, I guess. So. Okay, I really am stopping. I gotta go. <laughs> oh gosh. Okay, so yeah. Now you get to look at me and say, hmm, didn't quite look like her. No, her eyes aren't that big. Unless I was, you know, I take pictures. Sometimes I do that. And my daughter says, like, yeah, just smile like regular. So smirk. <laughs> anyway, yeah, it's not a, here, I'll, I'll hold me side by side. There we go. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely not the face shape. Face shape's off. Um, yeah, looking pretty, 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 not it, but you know what? It's okay. It's fun. I had a good time. I can put it in the back of a drawer somewhere and never look at it again. Or I can pull it out a year from now and say, oh, I am so much better now. So do whatever you want with yours. Have a good time. Play with it. Um, Hopefully in class and Zoom, we'll try some other things, maybe some different approaches. Some of the things that we looked at in the sketchbook book where they were just whimsical or different um, approaches. We'll, we'll play with it a little bit more, but in the meantime, you guys play, okay? And show them, I can't wait to see what you're doing. All right, have fun, bye.